G'day. This video is a little bit mixed up. Um, this particular one is about the uh, the boom I've I've put up, and uh, as part of that, there was a a little clampy conical coupling arrangement that I made for it, and I thought that'd be nice as a separate video. But when I put it all together, uh, it only came to uh, six or seven minutes. So rather than getting one video roughly around about 15 minutes long, uh, I'm putting this out as two. Oh, you know, seven, eight, whatever minute videos, uh, because I think there'll be other people who might be interested in the conical coupling, but not necessarily interested in the in the boom. Uh, the boom itself is up here, and uh, this is this is here for as a as a well, it's it's for the camera basically, so I can position the camera a little bit more easily rather than having to rely on a um, a tripod all the time, but. Uh, so this, anyway, this video is, is, is a bit about making that up and um, fitting it all together and all that sort of stuff. And uh, the other, other video is about the couplings. As you saw, I just made up a, a template, uh, and the way I'm going to now use that is I'm going to wrap that around a, a piece of pipe, not this particular one, but um, another one. Right. And then I can come around and put a line in there, and that will tell me where I need to cut, because what I want to do is get um, cuts like that on the end, so I've got a sort of 135 degree um, bend. Okay, so this is going to actually be on the end of the truss, uh, and then this will come off of that, and um, you know do its do its thing. This is the top of the um, the boom frame, and uh, I want to put those um, angled pieces on there now to get a reference line. I've bridged across this and the other tube with the the uh, the rule here, and I put myself a, a mark. I can then come along with my bit of paper and wrap that around there, trying to keep everything you know vertical and aligned and, and all that sort of thing. And then if I trace around the top of that with a pencil, that'll give me my cut mark. Now the interesting thing is that although the, the, the curve on the bit of paper is, is probably um, you know, best described as a, as a cosine, that mark will be straight and so I can then get a, I'll, I'll probably use an angle grinder uh, with a with a, a, a suitable cut off wheel just to, to, to cut that off and I've got my angle set so the bend, the, the bend should be parallel with the, the plane that the two centres of these tubes make. This is the hinging arrangement that I've come up with for the middle section. I don't know where I got this from. Um, I, I, I didn't invent it, it, it unless it came to me in a flash of inspiration. I, th I think I've seen it elsewhere, but basically I've got two butt hinges. Uh, I've welded them together there, and then one goes under here and one comes here. And as you'll see in a moment, the, it gives a, a, um, a range of movement, which means that this, these, these tubes here, and those tubes here for, for that matter, uh, don't actually pivot on each other. It means I can have a loop of cable going through here and not worrying about that, that pinching on itself. I did have to 
knock these hinges a bit you might be able to just pick up that this one here comes in and then pushes out to go around the pin uh, smaller hinges will do that to get, make them a bit more compact but because of the size bolts I'm using which are just a an M5 countersink um, it wouldn't accommodate that so I've had to, to just do a little bit of panel beating it's not as tight as I'd like I may have to remake these but as something just to try out an idea uh, I, I think it uh, is it's worked quite well This is the wall bracket for mounting the boom. Nothing terribly exciting here. Uh, some 50 by 3 flat welded up. Holes there for um, screw out raw plugs. I prefer uh, this sort because you can screw the, the inside out and, and get that out easily. Because I'm wrapping around a corner I need something that will come in from the front otherwise I could have used some diner bolts I guess. Uh, these hinges are just a lift off gate hinge uh, and I've just welded them on there. And uh, Yes, that, the, the boom drops on there. I need to put some, some grease on there, but that'll drop in and then that'll sit flat in against the wall there. Here's one side of my clamp, um, or rather one side of my coupling uh, with, the, with the clamp for the tube on it. I'm going to bore a 25 millimeter diameter hole there to fit on the tube. Now, I guess there are two, three, several ways of doing this. Uh, the one I'm choosing here is I've got some um, card here uh, around about one bit over one millimeter thick and so once I've borne that hole through there I'll have a one millimeter gap there from a perfect circle. Uh, another possibility is not doing that and just having it clamped up but then when you bore your hole you're then going to have to face off a little bit of material from the, the, the joint uh, third option is you have this as one piece, you bore your hole and then you slice it through with a, with a saw to give you the gap but uh, as you can probably appreciate you do need that gap there so you can clamp up on the tube. I don't want to crush the tube so it's relatively long, uh, I just want to be able to, to, to hold it and um, you know not have the, have the tube crush, not have the thing slip, all that sort of stuff. Here's my clamp uh, bored out. I've removed the uh, the strips of uh, card. I could have used a bit of one millimeter or so, 1.2 millimeter aluminium, and that would have done uh, just as well, maybe even better, uh, because when the when the boring bar uh, went over the top of the, the the break here with the card, I got a click all the time. So with a bit of aluminium in there, uh, there'd be a good chance that I wouldn't even get that. Here's a piece of uh, aluminium tube, and. I'll just put the saddle over the top there, so you can see there, gap on one side, that gap there's probably just a little bit smaller so it could do with a little bit of evening up, not that it matters, um, but that is certainly you know, tight and snug in there so that's a, a nice fit. Uh, I'll probably do a little bit of work on this to relieve a, a, a bit more and, and get some uh, more weight out if I can, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm running out of daylight a bit here but I thought I'd do a, a quick recap of where I am. I've hollowed out the back of these conical couplings so that uh, they're a bit lighter. Uh, I've bolted on the, the clamp which is going to go on to the, to the boom and then I've done this. Now this looks a little bit odd but it all has its place. That sits over there like that and then that one goes on so, and then this bit goes in here and clicks up. And then there's a screw, I've just got a normal screw here, this will be a proper knob when it's, when it's done. Uh, and that locates in a little cup on the, the top of this, this clamping piece here. But what that means is that when this is undone I can move that around like so and I can even put a spring in there to help disengage those teeth. It doesn't need to be much, it's only a you know, millimetre or two. And then I can tighten that up and everything clamps into place. Now the reason I've done it this awkward way was simply that I was running out of space and I needed to have it so that if I needed to take this apart or even put it together, I could do it this way. This piece here is actually made out of a bit of key steel uh, and that's a handy handy thing to, to have on hand. Um, 
This stuff is usually, well you can get stainless versions of it, but it's usually a, a medium or high carbon steel, uh, you know, a 1040 or, or something like that. So if you need a small short piece of stock, square stock, uh, it's ideal. This isn't the first time I've, I've uh, used it like this, um, but it's just uh, very handy. Now, what I can then do with this is I've got, I mean this will be a bit of, bit of chew, but I can put that in there, tighten that screw up, and not only does that clamp that up, it also clamps this up, and means that none of this stuff can, can come out. So it's, it's quite a useful little thing. This is the last piece. Um, you saw this being made in a separate video, but uh, this is just the joining piece that goes onto a quadrant here, and this was inspired by my unfortunately now late uncle. Uh, and that goes up onto the end of the boom there, where the coupling is. Here's the coupling. Uh, attached to the boom plus attached to the to the downpipe that leads to the quadrant. This isn't all completely finished but what it means is that I can adjust the the coupling up here to give myself various bits of angle here. Uh, I can adjust that to give myself angle there and I can also adjust this one to, to tilt the camera. So I should be able to set up all sorts of shots with this uh, without getting in the way of the machines itself. I, I should be able to dangle this over the lathe, I should be able to dangle this over the mill, um, rather than rely on, on either a fixed bracket or a tripod. You can see one problem though, that this thing is a little bit on the bouncy side. I might have to think about how I can, how I can fix that. I don't know whether I, I really can, I might just have to wait. But um, there it is, the long running camera boom project. So. Thanks for watching and uh, see you for the next one.